Hello my friends, I'm Duchess and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are trying to find a way to share your own comic or story with the world but don't know where to begin, this video is for you. Canvas webtoons are webtoons that are created by anyone. Webtoon gives everyone the opportunity to post their own stories on their platform, but only selected webtoons can be originals. The creators of original webtoons can get paid enough to live off of it, and they probably have some other benefits that I wouldn't know because I'm not an original creator. This can be through different types of contests or because Webtoon has noticed the potential of your Webtoon and promoted it as an original. In today's video, I will be showing you how to make a Webtoon using Procreate. When I first started last year, it was super confusing and it took me forever to figure out what I needed to do in order to make a Webtoon on Procreate. After much trial and error, I've learned much more about creating Webtoons, so hopefully this video will make it easier for you. Let's get started. First, get Procreate, obviously. The great thing about Procreate is that it isn't super expensive, but it still has everything you need to create a great webtoon. Then you have to create the canvas size for your webtoon. The dimension size for a frame is 800 by 1280 pixels long. This is your canvas, which you will be illustrating on. The individual drawings on these canvases are called panels. I'll show you some examples. So here is a strip from my webtoon. On this strip, there are one, two, three, four, five panels. Each of these drawings are considered a panel. Here's another one. This one only has one, two, three panels. A lot of people get confused on what a panel is and I totally understand because I had a lot of trouble understanding what this was as well and I only found out a few months ago what a panel really was. You will probably have more than one panel in your webtoon even if you are a canvas creator. I usually have pretty lengthy episodes that I break up into several parts, so each time I upload, I upload about 8 to 16 panels a week. The reason for this is because it takes a lot of time to make a webtoon and I don't have the ability to post an entire episode in a single week. I know it might seem like it's not a lot, but it's actually really a lot of work and I have a lot of respect for all of those webtoon creators or comic creators. It's just an insane amount of work. Here are my canvases. I label all of them and this one here says webtoon panel 4x which is basically 4 of the 800 by 1280 pixels instead of just one. So the dimension size for this strip is actually 800 by 5120 pixels which is just four times longer than the than one of the frames. This episode that I am currently working on is episode 5 and it's about 35 panels long so I'm going to get 7 of these strips ready. I try to draw at least one panel per canvas frame. Sometimes I have only 3 panels, sometimes I have 6 or 7. It, it really depends on you and what you want but usually I'll do at least 4 for each strip. First I'm going to click this wrench button on the top left. This gives me many options, but I'm going to click on canvas. I flip the switch on drawing guide. This creates a grid-like canvas, which helps with dividing the panels up. Click on edit drawing guide. Okay, remember that this canvas size is actually four times the length of a singular frame. To help me to remember that, I adjust the grid size of the drawing guide so that the panels are divided into two columns and eight rows. You can see that every two rows is equal to one of the 800 by 1280 pixels. This lets me figure out how to organize my drawings. You don't want your drawings to be too big or too small. When readers read webtoons, the canvas fills up their whole screen, so you have to be mindful of how big or small your panels are. Click the wrench again, go to canvas again, and flip the reference switch here. It'll automatically show you your whole canvas, but I want to see my script for the episode that I'm working on. So I'll go to image, import image, and then select the image that I want. Now I use my sketching brush to draw my outline for these panels using my script so that I can see what I need to draw. Quickly, I am going to draw the outlines for the whole episode because it should be pretty quick. Looking at my outlines, you can hardly understand anything that I wrote and that's okay because at least I can understand my own notes. It's just a bunch of messy lines which represent the borders of each drawing or panel on the canvas and I have some notes written for every box to help me remember what exactly I wanted to draw. It's pretty messy, but as long as you know what's happening, it doesn't really matter. I draw the outline for the whole episode first because it helps to make the episode flow smoothly. 
Right now, I know exactly what I want to make happen in this episode and the scenes that take place, so I want to get all of my ideas down on the panels. If I make some outlines today and then some tomorrow, I might not remember exactly what I wanted or was planning to do. The outlining process should only take an hour or less to do. The next step is sketching, which I do on the same layer as the outline. Sketching takes me about three hours in total, and I also do this for the whole episode. After sketching, my episode looks much more clear, and you can see what I'm doing. Unlike Clip Studio, Procreate doesn't have shapes that you can use to automatically create perfectly even boxes and speech bubbles, so I started doing them manually. I make another layer and label it P for panel. I start with the panels by making a border and then hold still until Procreate evens out the shape that I make. Now I have an uneven border with straight lines, so I click the selection tool at the top, which will help me to make some alterations. I select freehand and circle the area that I wish to change. This will only affect what I have made within the selected area. Now click on the arrow button at the top and there will be this there will be new options at the bottom. Click distort. This option will allow you to adjust the shape of the border as much as you want. This is how I make my borders even and it's an easier way of making borders than it would be if you attempted to make a border with four straight lines. After I finish the borders for the panels, I make the bubbles on a new layer named Bub. Procreate will automatically fix the shape of your bubbles. Webtoon usually has speech bubbles outside of the border which allows readers to see most of the panels compared to traditional comics, so it's pretty spacious in between your drawings. Next, I add the text for the speech bubbles. I use the Jack Armstrong font from Procreate at size 7 because that's what I prefer, but it's really up to you. Text will usually get their own layer unless you combine them, but that will mean you can no longer edit the text, so I usually leave them as they are. Now I focus on the panels I need for my weekly uploads and ink. For me, that's usually about 12 panels or wherever I think is a good place to end off. If I completely finish those panels before the deadline, then I'll ink the other panels and get started on those, but I need to focus on the ones that I'm posting first. I used to have more detailed sketches, but I needed to make this process easier and quicker for me so that so I just use the outlines to draw the final version. After I ink the panels I want, it's time to start coloring. I used to color every single thing on a separate layer and ended up with like 70 layers, but I've managed to decrease it to 30 by coloring it on a few layers. You don't have to color it the way that I do, but I would recommend it if you want to save uh, file space and make it less complicated because the colors are less scattered. First coloring layer is labeled back. This will be the background color which will fill in the boxes or the panels. This layer will be the very bottom because it's the background. Any layer that is on top of another will show up on top of the others and vice versa. I'll teach you guys a neat trick I learned for coloring in the backgrounds real easy. So duplicate the panel and the bubbles layer, the P and bub layer, and combine them by selecting merge down and then label it ref, for short for reference. This is so I don't get the layers confused, of course. Now click on the layer and you'll see these many wonderful options on the left. Click reference. Then go back to your back layer and use color drop to fill in the panel area. The reference trick lets you color in the background efficiently and I definitely recommend this method because it has made my life so much easier. I know it's just a background and you know, it's just, it's basically just a square, right? But it really does make it easier, it's just, faster, it's more efficient. Above that layer will be another layer called color. This is where I color all my character's skin tones and clothes. I also create two separate layers above that for the hair and the eyes because they both have their own special effects. I have a, everyone has their own styles, their art styles and ways of drawing and I have, my, I have my own art style and the way that I shade hair and eyes is a little bit more complicated than it probably should be so I usually put those on their own layer. When I'm done with the coloring for the panels then I start the shading. You can shade any way that you want whether that is using alpha lock or clipping mask. I'll show you both methods and you can decide for yourself. I used to use alpha lock so I'll show you this way first. Click on the layer that you want to shade, select the alpha lock option on the left. This will only let you color on what already exists on that layer with the alpha lock setting. 
The other method is the clipping mask method, which is my go-to and favorite. Click on the layer, select clipping mask and shade. This is essentially the same as alpha lock, but on a separate layer. So I feel like it's safer. If I mess up on the shading, I can fix it easily, but it'd be harder with alpha lock because you have to fix it on the same layer that you colored it on. Not sure if that makes sense, but if you were to actually do it, you might understand better. Now I am done with these panels, which is what I'll be uploading. When uploading onto Webtoon, you need to crop your canvas into four parts so that it's the required size of the 800 by 1280 pixels. Because remember, I multiplied the length of the regular size by four, so it was extra long. So what I'll do is I'll duplicate the canvases four times so that I can crop them. Click the wrench. Click Canvas, go to Settings, input 1280 pixels to get the normal Webtoon size. Press Snapping and it'll automatically divide the whole canvas equally. If you look closely, you'll see these thin yellow lines and it kind of shows you like how, like where you should crop it because it divides it evenly. Then I'll mail them to myself and upload them onto my computer. Name your episode and insert a thumbnail. A thumbnail has to be 436 by 436 pixels only and there is a maximum resolution so be careful not to exceed that limit. The maximum resolution for your episode is 20 MB. So also be careful of that because sometimes I'm very very close to that limit. You can move the panels around if the order is mixed up and you can also view how it would look on mobile and PC which is really really helpful. Just make sure you always look at that before you upload because sometimes there are some really, really bad errors on there. Also, don't forget to add a little author's note at the end because I think these are always nice to read after you read the webtoon episode, you know. Last but not least, publish the episode. This is how I make my webtoon using Procreate. I really hope that this video helps aspiring webtoon creators because it can be very overwhelming at first. I would be glad to make more of these videos if it helps you out, so let me know down in the comments below if you'd like to know more about the webtoon process. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get notified. Thank you so much for watching, I hope to see you next week.